I wanted to take a moment or two just to discuss the case of um, conductors, something we talked about in the first lecture in electrical fields, something we talked about in, in lecture three. So there are some special remarks, some particular remarks when you have conductors in electrical in electrical fields. In, in particular, I want to say something about the electrical field inside the conductor and on the surface of the conductor. And I want to say something about the um, charge distribution inside the conductor and on the surface of the conductor. So I'm, I'm sharing a slide with you. It's actually the famous loss slide from the third lecture. It's the slide I never got to at the end of the third lecture. And it's all about conductors in electrical fields. So I want you to imagine that you place a conductor in an electrical field. So that conductor might be a piece of metal, iron, copper, nickel. That conductor might be, say, a glass of Saudi water. Both of those, the, the metal and the Saudi water, are conductors. They both contain charge carriers that are free to move around inside the conductor. In, in the case of the metal, the charge carriers are electrons. In the case of the water, the charge carriers are ions. But in both cases, there's charge carriers that are free to move around inside those, inside those conductors. So when you place the conductor in a electrical field, there's a short period of non-equilibrium. And then that's followed by a period of equilibrium. In that short period of equilib non-equilibrium, the charge carriers inside the conductor, so the electrons in the metal or the ions in the water, uh, they're, they're frantically moving around under the influence of electrical forces due to the electrical field they're experiencing. In the period of equilibrium, after the charge carriers have moved around, those charge carriers are no longer experiencing electrical forces. They're no longer immersed in electrical fields. That transition from non-equilibrium, where the charge carriers are feeling forces due to being immersed in fields, to equilibrium, where they're not feeling forces due to not being immersed in electrical fields, is because the charge carriers moved around, the electrons or the ions moved around to cancel out that electrical field, cancel out those forces that they were experiencing. So that's what happens when you place conductors like a, a slab of metal, uh, like a glass of salty water in an electrical field. Now on the slide, I got some statements, some facts about the situation in equilibrium. So let's just walk through those. So firstly, these statements apply to equilibria of the conductor. They don't apply to the non-equilibrium of the conductor. The first statement is that the electrical field everywhere inside the conductor is zero in equilibrium. And you can understand that the electrical field everywhere inside the conductor is zero from the following point of view. If the electrical field was not zero, then the charge carriers will continue to experience electrical forces and will continue to move around inside the conductor. And so once equilibrium is achieved, then the electrical field inside the conductor is zero. The second statement 
is that the electrical field just outside the conductor, immediately outside the conductor, is perpendicular to the conductor's surface. This one you, you can also understand by thinking about the case of if it wasn't perpendicular to the conductor's surface, if there was a parallel component to the field to the conductor's surface, if there was a parallel component to the field of the conductor's surface, what it would do is create a force on the charge carriers, on the electrons or the ions that are at the surface of the conductor, and they would continue to move around. So in equilibrium, where the charge carriers, electron ions are not moving around, the electrical field at the surface of the conductor, just outside the surface of the conductor. The third statement is that, and this one refers to the charge, in the conductor rather than the field in the conductor is that any regions of excess charge in the conductor, so that's regions that are you know, not neutral, that are positively charged or negatively charged, any regions of excess charge are located at the surface of the conductor. They're not inside the volume of the conductor. That's this statement here. And so those are the three rules or three statements about conductors in equilibrium. As I say, they don't hold during that stage of non-equilibrium, but once you reach that stage of equilibrium, these three statements about the fields, about the charge distributions, they all three hold. There's an example that I've shown over here on the, on the right-hand side of this slide. On the right-hand side of this slide, a conductor has been placed in an electrical field. So maybe a sphere of iron has been placed in an electrical field. And there's this moment of non-equilibrium where the charges are moving around in the iron. But then we reach equilibrium for the iron in the electrical field. And that's what we're picturing. We're picturing the field, the electrical field in this situation, and we're picturing the charges distributed on the conductor in this situation. And so let's make a few remarks about the field and about the charges. So starting with the field, you'll notice that there are field lines outside the conductor. There is a electrical field outside the conductor, but there's no field inside the conductor. And that fulfills our statement, our first statement, that there's no field inside the conductor. You'll also notice that the field lines outside the conductor are perpendicular to the surface of the conductor. And that meets our second statement about the fields at the surface of the conductor. And then finally, any charge any regions of non-zero charge, non-zero, negative, positive charge, any regions that are not neutral on the conductor um, are located on the surface of the conductor. And that's what I tried to show here. These field lines are terminating on these negative charges on the surface of the conductor. And so that's an illustration, that's an example of our rules or our statements about conductors in electric fields. Anyway, I hope that helps with any confusion, uh, any issues with that missing slide from lecture three that I never got to in the class.